I was listening to Naked Five. Yeah. Oh, I gotta plug the microphone. In. You you might want to plug the camera in too. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you oh, don't want to do camera tonight. It's the microphone. Gotcha. Uh, You're late. <laughs> it is Thursday night once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thursday wow. night, October 3rd, 2024. We are, uh, what, three days into World War Three now? That's about right. Yeah. Affirmative in the accurate state. All right. Who wins? Do you know? Um, uh, let's see. In this case, I'm going to say that Bob Evans wins. Bob but Evans. you can do better. You can do better, really. No. Well, I mean, I know who loses World War Three. That's everybody. Everybody loses. I'm just not well, sure who wins. Everybody except for the villains of Vaduz. Hey, fuck you, Lichtenstein. Anyways, back to you, Grizzle. Yeah. Um, shit. I, you know, I, I was actually about to, to bring up the... Um, what do you call it? The soundboard? Cause, oh, um, you got the car crash sound now, right? Yeah, I do. I, I, but you were a little quick. Uh, I did not have my trigger finger ready. so you know. Stop tailgating me, you pasty teabag. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, right at 10 o'clock, because I remember looking at the laptop and it said 9.59, and I thought, I've done it. I didn't pass out. I didn't nod off or anything. And then I looked back up and it was 10.01. I was like, oh, yeah, you're you're starting to get into that special time. Yeah. yeah. I, what happened at 10 o'clock? What was this like the 13th floor on the elevators or something? Like you just go 12 to 14 now? Like, what's going on, man? I'm, I'm warping the space time continuum. Around yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what you're doing. Do you have experience with that? Have you done it before? Well, it stems from my proclivity to pretend to be a musician. <laughs> what What do you mean pretending to be a musician? I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to figure all this shit out, man. <laughs> I thought you, I mean, you make music. I've heard you play music. You've played music live on the air. You played yeah. music live in the studio. I'm the only one who heard it, but it happened. Um, hell, I've even gone to places like um, Nashville, Tennessee, and pretend to play live. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm... Well, uh, you know, in... in that using the lexicon of our business, um, I believe the, the, that that category of fan is known as uh, fucking haters. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, well, that's, that's, the that, thing. That's, how, that, that's a metric for success right there. You yeah. got haters? Absolutely. Pat yourself on the back. Absolutely. Feel that winning. You're, you're, you're winning so much. You're winning this. Yeah, if you have gotten underneath yes. someone's skin uh, sufficiently enough that they have decided they need to express themselves in such a manner, um, that is that is indeed a victory. It's I consider it a measure of success, personally. You know, to, to go with the American football analogy, it's blitz and sacking a quarterback every time. Fuck your offensive line. You're going down, bitch. Sports ball intensifies. I think the cats move the damn camera. They've been tearing ass all over the place all week. Like, I have to keep them separated. It's ridiculous. You got to keep them separated, just That's like right. the offspring. 
I'm sorry, it's not my not my time to bitch. I'm not the one that, that damn near got killed by nature last night. Oh. And lived to tell the tale. Yeah, speaking of almost being killed by nature last night, man, I've got like three or four bitch sessions lined up. I, I'm so glad you reminded me. Um, let me check the... Let's see. Why is my screen like that? Did I never turn my camera on? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, that screen's like that because I paused it so there wouldn't be an echo. Man, I got to get higher. Um, but okay. by the way, folks, um, in case you forgot, smoke more of the weeds. Working on it. I mean, it's Tuesday or Thursday night. Shit. Yeah, yeah, it's working. Oh, right. hey, I'm not even high enough yet. Good thing Biscotti's not here. So, uh... Oh, shit. I have I have to sadly announce to the viewing audience, uh, those that um, view with their overstuffed ear holes, think of like a McRap with um, hamburger-like chunks in it. It's hamburger-y. Um, that, that's where we're at. Well, then there's this little thing known as, um, automobile insurance. So, because the, the, la hormiguita de plata, my little, um, silver ant, <laughs> uh, as Drizzle was famous with uh, one of the few rider dies to ride shotgun in that thing. Yeah. Um, All the way to well, Pueblo and back. It's, it's already been taken out to pasture at um, Ted's Towing, um, located about a half mile down the road from where uh, Tom Massey's driveway comes out on the main track there. Um, oh, wow. Were you coming from uh, Massey's house? Um, well, when I hit the deer last night at about 12.02 midnight, I was about mm, seven or eight minutes from his house. So it's his fault, in other words. You know, it's too bad that you weren't closer to RFK Jr. Because he could have helped you dump it in a park somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. He's done that before. He's got experience. Knows what he's doing. Or, or do like Uncle Ed and, uh, you know, just throw off Chappaquiddick Bridge. <laughs> too, soon. That too. Yeah. too soon. Too <laughs> soon. Wow. It's uh, funny how, like, uh, women dying uh, in that family is just like a generational pattern. It still slaps, too. It's so Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, car insurance um or as we Those like to fuckers. call it in our business extortion rackets um oh yeah <laughs> so here's here's the good part right uh if if things work the way that they're supposed to right which is where the insurance company looks at the car says it's total loss <clears throat> we're gonna cut you a check to pay it off or whatever for whatever value that they decide that is valued at, because that's that's how it works. Is they decide what amount it's going to be. Um, right. Yeah, and you say well, the payoff is eight thousand two hundred. The blue book is seventy seven seventy seven. Yeah. There's thousand dollar deductible. So, I figure if I work hard enough and fast enough with this claims adjuster to get everything that they ask for, I should be able to get Fort Worth, Texas, a big, nice four thousand dollar check. That way, uh, when it's all said and done and the dust clears and I have no rental car and no working car, um, at least I'll still have probably, you know, two or three thousand more dollars that right. I owe on a car that I don't have anymore and no way to get another car. Um, but um, well, I'm not really worried about it. I'm more worried about lowering my carbon footprint and... Um, 
I'm well on my way. Well, there you go. I mean, you know, when the car um, wouldn't run anymore, I thought, fuck it, we ball. I'll just walk home. No problem. Everybody's asleep. There's no cell phone signal. I've still got coffee drink and weeds. Why not? So uh, why why didn't you call like a, like an Uber or, or something and get a ride? I thought about that. Um, I thought about calling the sheriff. thought about calling a tow truck, Uber, Lyft, uh, wife, friends, family. Right. All of which ceased to become an option when I noticed that the phone had no cell phone signal whatsoever. Oh, but shit. But fortunately, um, after that 28-mile um, stroll, it only took about seven and a half hours. Um, when I got around 22 miles into that trip, boom, I got signal. So, no problem. And then my homie, shout out Clayton, came and picked me up when, uh, you know, saved me from walking the, the last um, 11 miles. Well, that was well, awful nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, 12 miles because it's like, it was, uh, I was like 40.8 miles from home. Basically 41 oh, miles from home. Man. And I walked the first 28 miles. So were you like literally in the hauler when this happened? I was um, actually right at the county line about to cross into uh, Greenup County, Kentucky, precisely in, um, let me see, what was it called again? Yeah, uh, Bumfuck, Egypt, on the side of a mountain. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. then when I looked at things, I'm like, hmm. I should be able to get signal at the top of this hill. But in case yeah. I don't, I'm not going to take all this other stuff with me. I, I'm going to pack light. But I, I'm going to take my waffle honey treats and, you know, my uh, chocolate cashews and coffee drink. And thought it would be fine. And then... Um, and weeds, obviously. And weeds. And then going up Beachy Hill, because the, the problem with the highway is that it's through very rugged mountainous country. So, like, every mile and a half, you've got a truck lane again because you're going up a 7 8% grade, climbing, you know, vertically from the bridge at the bottom to the bridge at the top. I don't know, six, 700 feet, two-mile-long climb. Um, and then another one, and then another one, I think it was five fucking hills. Um, I mean, who, who's counting? Anyways, um, so, you know, as Deffy pointed out in the telegram chat earlier, you know, working out the legs and the ass at the same time. Well, yeah, I mean, you're not going to have to do leg day again for like at least another week. Yeah. You're good. You're just knocking shit out early is all you're doing. So it turns out, um, shout out to the general insurance company of Madison, Wisconsin. Um, the, the car dealership, because of the financing with Lane, required full coverage insurance. Right. But then general says, oh, well, you had full coverage insurance, our best package. But that still doesn't include rental car because that's an add-on extra. Yes. Typically it is. Um, and then um, when it came to getting the car towed, um, their tow company does not retrieve any vehicles from the side of the road. What? I'm sorry. Where do they I'm retrieve them they from? They said then? that their tow company does not retrieve any cars from the side of the road, only from impound lots from uh, other tow truck companies. What? How, how? Wait. How does that make any fucking sense whatsoever? You don't need to have a vehicle towed from the impound lot. 
You go to well, the well, impound we're lot to about get a vehicle that's sense. been towed. It makes sense if you're talking about insurance claims. It totally does. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you were it denying. doesn't. It I'm doesn't. It doesn't denying. at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so long and the short. My car insurance was actually more than the car payment. Yeah, and I can believe that. Basically, what's going to happen is the finance company will get 100% of the, in I think, even though I was paying the insurance bill mm -hmm. and I was a policy holder for the insurance company. I guess it's just kind of make to, it's supposed to make me feel better over the fact that in the case of any type of benefits from the insurance policy that I'm paying, I will always receive none of it because it has a lien on it and a hundred percent goes to the bank. Correct. You don't own the title. Right. Yeah. The bank owns it. Correct. It'd be exactly, it. it would be exactly the same as if uh, we were talking about a house in this situation. Right. Same thing. Yeah. So no rental car, no fixing the car, no replacing the car, hmm. but we will let you keep the other two or $3,000 where it's upside down and you can pay that. Interesting. With the job, you can't work with the car you don't have now. That's really interesting because, um, uh, I was in your exact same, well, not exact same situation, um, but back in, I think it was 2012, uh, I had oh, a car. Oh, we're going way back. Yeah, oh, we're, go yeah we're going back. That's um, like Obama type 2012 yeah. stuff, Jonah Brothers. Uh, uh, we're, Jonas going, Brothers we're going pre-Smith Hunt. Watch yourself. Predator yeah. drones, you never see it coming. That's right. We're time traveling tonight on Get Fact Harder, ladies and gentlemen. Um. So I was on my way from Warrington, Virginia to Roanoke uh, Whoa. early one morning. Uh, I don't even remember. I think I was on 29. As a matter of fact, I hadn't yep. even gotten to uh, Louisa yet. I was barely the about to drag to Danville, Virginia, baby. Yeah. I was like, I was basically about an hour south of uh, Warrington. Sun's just starting to come up because again, this is I've got to be in Roanoke at like I think ten o'clock in the morning or something, um, and it's it's going to take like four or five hours to get there. Ugh. So it's early, early. That's a but swamp. the sun's just coming up. I'm doing you know sixty sixty five. Got the cruise control on. Out of the corner of my eye, I see something coming at the car, and then. Boom, I'm hit. And I'm, I'm, you know, dazed, not quite sure what the fuck's going on. Obviously, I figured out it was a deer that tried oh, to... Oh, I thought you were going to say it's Tony Stark, the Iron Man. No, 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 no. He, he no. has collided with um, vehicular traffic before. It happened. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, but no, it was a deer that had tried to vault over my car and, and missed. It caught oh. the, the top side of the passenger side uh, of the vehicle and just fucked the frame all to hell. Like, it bent the frame. That was, that was how hard the impact was. Uh, however, my insurance company... Like yeah, my insurance company, I mean, shattered the windshield. The like, car was fucked, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, my... I, Took it back. I was able to drive it back, went through and did all of the shit with the insurance company. Um, this might even have been 2013 now that I'm thinking about it. Because uh, I was fresh out of the insurance business at that point. Uh, so I knew like who I was dealing with and, and what buttons I needed to push to get the outcome that I wanted. Um, but after I got that, all that, of that, that stuff that's done. That's still Obama time. Right, 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 right. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Um, they should have, even the mechanic that fixed the car said they should have totaled the car, did not understand why they did not total the car. And to this day, I, I don't, still don't understand why. 
Um, but they did not do that. I did, however, have as part of my full coverage insurance at that time, so 11 years ago, um, the rental car, uh -huh. as well as towing. Like all of that stuff was still included as part of that coverage back then. And you would think if you're paying for the top full coverage fucking thing, that then they're not going to say, oh, well, but it still has $1,000 copay and we don't cover towing and we don't cover rental car and we don't. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, then it's as, as time goes by, this is, this is what people don't understand about the insurance business. It's, it's a fucking bait and switch game every single time, because as time goes by, they have to continue raising their rates in order to justify the same level of accepted risk. It's built into the system. That's yeah. never going to change. So what they do to offset that, again, over time, so you don't notice that it's happening, is they start taking away features in the coverage. So that we're 10 years later, Insurance rates, uh, they've probably gone up a little bit, not a whole lot, you know. But it's not the same product. It's because, not the oh, same well, product that's because you're paying the same for less. $2,000 copay and right. fuck you. Deductibles have gone up. Yeah, all of that shit. <laughs> it's a fucking scam. And, and <laughs> the fact that, that states require you to carry insurance on an automobile. I don't know how that's not extortion. It's an extortion racket. Yeah. Um, I hate to repeat myself. I hate to repeat myself. It's an extortion racket. And now well, you know why talk. I got out of that business. Yeah. Because it only took me about five years to figure it out. So, um, I didn't really get into the narrative, but essentially... Um, the story picks up around Maysville, Kentucky, which is really the only civilization to speak of that you encounter on the 130 mile long double A highway, Kentucky route 10. Um, it's called double A highway because it goes from Alexandria to Ashland, Kentucky. Hello. Um, and it's basically like an interstate, but it's usually only two lanes unless you're going up a hill and then there's a truck lane. Right. Um, it's one of those kind of like, it's what I call a two lane freeway. Um, yeah. Full of fucking semi traffic. And oh, yeah, uh, it's Maysville, like Kentucky is not the only civilization. So as soon as I went through Maysville, I start getting the sporadic fog and now I'm starting to lose um, visibility sight distance and it drops to, you know, three, 400 yards. Hmm. See my first party of deer going across the road and it's like, uh, maybe eight or 10, maybe as many as a dozen. I don't know. It was so far in the distance. All I saw was just like, an entire fucking herd crossing the road. It's not like one or two deer. Well, then it was like gang. Uh, yeah, a gang of fucking deer, and they were doing the crip walk on their hooves. So blue, um, oh blue tongue. Yeah, good thing I didn't hit him. That stuff's communicable. Um, mm -hmm. well, then when I got through Tolesboro, which is the western side of Lewis County, named after Meriwether Lewis. Um, shout out Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea's pussy. Um, uh, so let's see, where was I? So I'm outside Tolesboro and I see like a doe and two spotted fawns go by. And I'm like, oh man, at this point, my visibility is now down to about 200 yards, maybe five, 600 feet. So. I just turn the fucking cruise control off at 60, pull it down to about 52. Um, 
And then, you know, 10 miles later, I'm rolling through Vanceburg past Tom Massey's place. And at this point, I'm right by the Ohio River in between the mountains where there's this fog that forms above the Ohio River at night. And it just got to the point to where visibility was down to about 30 yards, maybe 40 yards. I don't know, about 100 feet, 150 feet. Um, super, super thick, moist, like dense fog. So now I'm slowed down about 45, going up the steepest part of the hill. I'm coming around a blind curve. And boom, there I see one, two, three, four, five fucking deer in a row doing the conga or the limbo. I don't know. They're in a whole line stretched across the entire fucking road between guardrail on one side and rock wall on the other. And I'm lined right up with the Clydesdale looking fucking Lou Ferrigno deer in the middle. Dead center where I'm just going to clip his bottom of his legs. And he's just going to roll right over my hood and right through my windshield and run in my fucking oh. lap. Yeah. They like to do and I've got about maybe six tenths of a second. Not even one second of response time. Fortunately, I was wow. only doing about 40 to 45. Um, so I had a little bit. I mean, if I'd been doing 60, I'd be dead. Because my airbags would have deployed. and Yeah. And so anyways. I thought. Well I got to try to steer. Toward the ass end. Of the second deer. Because there's. Not quite enough room. For me to fit between the second deer. And the third deer. And the uh, the conga line there. And. Well, you just got to get. So, I, cause I'm like fit, well man. I can either. Slam on the brakes and try to control the skid, but I'm not going to have as good a traction. It's going to be more difficult to steer when I'm just skating on four black stripes on the road now. Um, it would be better if I could just steer around it and slow down. So I steered, applied the brakes and cut to the right to the point that when I finally made contact with a, with the second deer, its center mass was lined right up with my driver's headlight to the point where its head whipped around and smacked right against my driver's side door. Uh -huh. uh, that's why I got all these fucking bruises and scratches. God yeah. damn it, man. Sprained both my wrists, so... Uh, yeah, I haven't been able to play piano since I come home. Um, yeah, so. yeah, my hands were all fucking cut up from the glass of the windshield. <laughs> but uh, so I, I hit the deer, and it immediately spun the car about ninety degrees. Yeah, like pushed the fucking engine block, like torqued it sideways. And I heard like rods and gears and cogs ripping and fucking guts just pouring into the fucking road. Oil, uh, it just transmission. Uh, oh man, oh my god. Yeah, man. well, it probably. And I go to open my door. I can't even get my driver's side door open between the hood and the fender crinkled up and everything. And now I'm like. Turn sideways, taking both my feet. I'm pushing with all my might. And I can just barely, I barely fucking wedge myself out. And I get up and stand on the ground. I look down between my feet and the fucking double yellow line is going between my boots and going right underneath the car between the front tires and the rear tires. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm blocking both lanes of the two lane freeway in dense fog with about a hundred foot visibility. Now I'm listening real close for the sound of ah, fucking Jake right I'm like, oh God. I'm just waiting for a fucking semi. I can just like and I'll have two seconds to just run to the side as the whole car just explodes into fucking um what do you call that you put on the, the Christmas tree? The little oh tinsel. Tinsel, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> confetti, but silver tinsel. Yeah. 
That might be a little too festive. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> so how did you get the car out of the road? Uh, well, where it was on, like, pointed up on, like, it was sideways to an 8% slope. So when I was able to wrestle it into neutral, I backed it up and then tried to get it steered down. But where it was in the curve, it had this fucking, the whole road itself was, like, um, super elevated and banked on the curb. And I couldn't get it to roll forward and I couldn't get it to roll backward. But now I'm just blocking the uphill lanes. Right. Which isn't and as bad. Like, Fuck. I'm going to have to get out and push this motherfucker. And so I go to get out, push it, and I can't because the fender's in the way. And this other thing's like dragging on the tire. And then so get the machete out, cut the fucking shit that's fucking dragging on the tire, get my hammer out, my pliers out, fucking get the fender out of the way. Now I can open my door, put my weight on it. And I heave and home the first time it just lifts up, don't move an inch. <laughs> heave even harder, it lifts even higher up, don't move an inch. I'm like, God oh, damn. Then I hear it. Oh I'm like, oh no, here it comes. Oh my god. And third time I go as hard as I can. Ah, and then finally it just moves about an inch, and then two, and then three, and then it's starting to roll. And I cut the wheels tight and aim it straight down this fucking ski slope hill. Hmm. hop in and like it's going and there's like grinding and chattering <laughs> steering it over to the shoulder and i look and i'm just leaving a fucking trail of fucking bolts and wires and tree uh, car guts all over the road get it over to the shoulder and i'm like well uh hmm and it's just smoking all the lights are on radiators trash it's total, but they probably won't total it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh we can it. fix this. We can fix this clown car. This five-year-old no, fix it. Compact manual transmission. We can easily fix it and keep it under blue book, replacing the entire transmission and engine and everything else that's under the hood. Yeah, it's all and, right. The next uh, owner the will plant. never know oh. that any of this happened. <laughs> I actually, the the car that I had that got hit by the deer that uh -huh. got fixed, I actually traded in <laughs> as part of my down payment on the next car that I got. So I don't know who ended up with that car, but it was not structurally sound. Ooh. Yeah. Well, on two previous occasions... I have been sleeping in my car and woke up to having the complete shit beat out of me uh, both times by three state troopers, a, a menage a cop. Um, and of course, you know, both times they were advising me to stop resisting as they were beating me to death. Uh, and then I had twice to face um, assaulting police officer charges, which... Um, they were kind enough to draw. Because when I showed up in court, black and blue, yeah. um, both times the judge was like, yeah, I'm just reduce this to public intoxication or something. I'm like, but I wasn't even drunk. I was asleep. Yeah, public intoxication, I don't know the fine. Next case, uh, oh, but it's a, 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 Oh, well, and, and the lawyer's like, hey, at least it's not assaulting a police officer charge. Like, buddy, pick the fuck out of me. What the? Anyway, what the hell? So, faced with that proposition and knowing I'm in the communist wealth of Kentucky and it's 1205, and there's absolutely no fucking cell phone signal, as I would later find out, for the next 22 fucking miles down this goddamn road. So there is no calling Lyft. There is no calling Uber. There is no calling taxi. I, I can only reach God. But I kept getting his voicemail. He, he's busy. Um, I heard he's a busy man. Yeah. Thing. Deity. Thing. Um, yeah. Super gender. 
beyond supra gender. God is supra gender. Sure, whatever. Which means God's hermaphrodite, penis Correct. and vagina. Correct. Yeah, which kind God, of lends some credence to the whole God Baphomet creates thing, by fucking but, with himself yeah. and others. There you go. Are you fucking with me again, God? Anyways. Well, let me tell you, I appreciate it. Anyways, you only fuck with the people you love. Anyways. Wow, you're on a roll, man. You know that? Stop tailgating me, you pasted teabag. So, uh, 22 miles later, I did finally get reception. But, That's insane. this was the most exciting part of it. I'm trying to figure out what do I need to pack. Because, you know, I would like to be able to hitchhike. But I'm not anywhere close to civilization. I'm now in the middle of a motherfucking ecosystem. A dense hardwood Appalachian forest ecosystem where the top predators are black bears and mountain lions in great abundance. And occasionally, you know, once or twice an hour, a vehicle will pass and there's a 10% chance it won't be a semi truck. So might be able to hitchhike as well. So in order to help me get more hitchhiking rides, I'll just walk down the road with my, um, 32 inch long machete hanging off my belt that should help oh yeah especially in the month of october well but only if it's between midnight and 7 a.m <laughs> yeah how far from crystal lake were you <laughs> well i had my little black well where is it here look where is the infamous bag that i packed ah uh, there it is. So here's the bag from the story. And it's got these fuckers. Stroke uh, a Dutch classic. Sure, I'll take your I word like for Mark it. Mark Ruta, who used to be the Dutch classic asshole. He put the ass in classic. Uh, yeah. uh, and I think he managed Drizzle to piss off every single fucking farmer in the Netherlands. Oh, um, I don't, I don't doubt it. Yeah. <clears throat> I know what he did before but he got he's into busy. politics. Yeah, he took over for, um, Schittenberg, the Schittenberg, uh, Stoltenberg, Yen Stoltenberg, uh, you know, the commander of NATO. And now he's, uh, apparently it's the, fire the, season the, in the piney the world. He's dick at the NATOs. Um, so these have, Eight soft toasted waffles filled with caramel, cinnamon, and real bourbon vanilla. Mm. That that actually does sound quite tasty. Very aromatic. It smells like fresh honey from the from like beeswax. Nice. And then I've got the chocolate peanuts, and I had a uh, half of a biscuit from Tudor's Biscuit World. And I'm carrying it around open in a bag. Oh, shit. Rustling in the bag with all these morning. food smells wafting out of it. But hanging it on the back of my walking stick that I've got over my shoulder, you know, walking hobo style. And I notice about eight or nine miles into the trip, because I've been hearing the deer. I mean, bear in mind, there's no moonlight. The only light was starlight. And... No street lamps, no traffic, no, no dark as complete fuck. Right. But my eyes adjusted to the starlight. And then right. when the car would come, I would literally have to walk the side of the road and close my eyes. Otherwise, I'd be blind for the next two minutes. Right. Uh, and using this, every time I tried to use a cell phone, worst mistake I could make. Because it, it was so bright. And it turned on. Yeah. It's completely fuck up my uh, eyesight and everything from night visioning. Right. on the starlight but so i can hear like the, the crack of like little twigs and hearing the fucking deer jumping around and frolicking i'm used to that sound but then i hear this thing like just busting through breaking fucking dead logs and i'm like is that fucking scam squatch the same squatch is it? no it's that probably a bear like a bigfoot or something like um, and it's getting closer and closer. 
And and as I'm walking along, I hear it rustling, and I'm like, I had to stop because the food bag was rustling so loud. Yeah. And then I was like, and I put my nose over the bag, and I'm like, hmm, that smells good. Oh, shit. I bet that's a fucking black bear. Yeah. Or chupacabra. These delicious fucking treats that that bear would love to eat, like my fingers and toes, arms and legs, ears, um, face parts. Um, you know, you know, people. <laughs> so I immediately stopped, people tied up the bag with a about double bears. knot, then put a second bag over it upside down, tied it up with a double knot, put it on there, walked to the other side of the road. And that motherfucker still followed along for another mile or two, but it just got fainter and fainter and fainter. And I think I, he just lost the scent of those delicious honey snacks he was going to eat when he found me. <clears throat> but no worry, I got the machete, you know. I'll just catch him with that machete, one or two swipes. I feel good about myself. Oh, yeah, he would not like that. He'll at all. swing around one time with his bear claws and um, and the kill end. you. <laughs> yeah, that would be the end result of that. <laughs> or even better yet, the the bear looks at me, laughs, reaches down real slowly, grabs the machete from me, and cuts my head off with it. That could happen. Could be. Bears yeah. are ambidextrous. They use both hands. Yes, they do. Uh, and, and they can write better sentences than Chick-fil-A cows. Anyway. Yes. But uh, people people misunderstand bears. Bears don't want to eat people. That's not what they're after. They're after your food. You are I mean, too much work. They would rather have your food. If you were out in the middle of bumfuck Egypt, and you smelled some nice, warm... Waffle sandwiches. Oh fuck yeah! They eat in the Netherlands with if that I was a black bear at three o'clock in the morning, like the morning high on going. fucking you know honeymead. Fuck yeah! You know who yeah. it might have been, Yona? <laughs> it might have been Xi Jinping. Yeah, he loves the Huani. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, I said but here is the, the most scandalous again. part of the entire walk save right. the best for last lay it on me I get to my home stretch walking down US Highway 52 US Route 52 and just past Haverhill at the Franklin Furnace uh, exit you know I'm walking along the very edge of the paved shoulder right where it meets the grass about you know, seven or eight feet over from the white stripe and the two vehicular lanes posted speed limit 70 miles an hour most people are doing 80 primarily the trucks but everything else again it's like 42 degrees Fahrenheit with a brisk breeze. I ain't got no jacket. So that stretch is just freezing me to death. But where shit got really uncool is, and this happened twice. First time I'm walking down, and all of a sudden I hear like a big fucking lift kit, almost like at Silverado I was driving for a while. You know, and I hear it the going over the fucking rumble strip into the shoulder. And I turn around and look behind me. This motherfucker's within about, you know, four or 500 yards of me. And he's steering for the very edge of the fucking blacktop to hit my fucking ass. So I jump and run into the fucking grass off the road. And he honks his horn and hollering, yee, as he goes by. That motherfucker tried to run me over. I swear to God. But, you know, if, if that wasn't enough, next motherfucker's in a... Chevy Durango and does the same thing to me about two miles further down the road. Same exact thing. Except he hollered, fuck you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was the machete or the hat or if there's just random crazy assholes out there. Yes. Um, well, I think again, it's the way you have to. 
I'm going to go with random crazy asshole for 200, Alex. You have to assume at this point, Yona, that everyone is walking around with at least one mental illness now. Yeah, that's big facts with cheese. Which bring me to tonight's Yona pro tip. Oh, and uh, wow. is this, are we all the way up to 43 now? This is number 43, correct. This, this right, is so. The, uh, uh, this is Yona Get Back Harder Pro Tip Forty Three. There you go. <clears throat> Subtitle with cheese. When ordering Chinese takeout, remember every single item that you order from China Kitchen Number One or Red Dragon or Silver Palace, Gold Chin, whatever they call it. Every single item that you order, add the two words as a critical suffix with cheese. I'd like two egg rolls with cheese, general cell barbecue with cheese, lo mein with shrimp with cheese, and some of the um, sugar donuts with cheese. I'll have that to go. Back to you, Drizzle. How how quickly do they throw you out? <laughs> I'm that asshole that takes a bottle of ketchup to an Italian restaurant. That's me. That's actually <laughs> funny. I enjoy shit like that when I'm out in public. <laughs> I like seeing people push back against the system. I think it's hilarious. So I, I, I've got the next one. You know, you, you might say, but Yona, I don't want the Chinese takeout at home. I might want to eat two or three plates. I prefer going to the China buffet. I, I hear you. And you know what? Grand Theft World Liberty Radio cares. We listen to our audiences. You know, we have an whole fucking call-in show. Request Damn, live. You've been practicing that. that. Right? And, and, you know, if if you're wondering why other shows weren't like that, fuck that dumb shit. Welcome home. Fuck it, we ball. It's like this all the time. Yeah. I'm glad you found us. All the time. Every day. Some so, if you're going others. to a Chinese buffet, this would be uh, Yona Pro Tip... Uh, here oh yona pro tip 62 <coughs> um subtitle you don't want to save that for with. a few months from now cheese whiz so if you go to a chinese buffet line and you want to you know keep going back two three four different rounds yona pro tip take at least two full cans of cheese whiz so that you can properly garnish every single plate that you make of Chinese food with glistening cheese whiz product at the buffet line before you sit back down. Be sure to show the mater d. That's why we're going to kick China's ass. They don't have cheese, Drizzle. Pussies. Yeah, and then make sure you share it with everyone else at your table, too. Yeah, that's the polite thing to do. And as the coup de gras is when you take both cheese whiz nozzles in the corners of your mouth, straighten the mouth, Kamala Harris style, with the cheese whiz. There you go. But don't do it until your Chinese waitress is at the table. She's doing the best she can to speak English. She needs to be horrified for the rest of her life watching two streams of aerosol powered cheese whiz plow into your mouth hole. And that's how TikTok uh, clips are made, folks. Yes, we storyboard that one, that this. Might, that this might is not improv. It. I don't know. Now, I need to clip up, because uh, it'll be, what is it, two days from now? It'll be a year that uh, we did the Uncle Hotep interview. Oh, so, that and was I've fun. not, I've never clipped that one up. 
So wow. except for like the first five minutes where I fucked up and, and nobody could hear him, uh, it was actually, it was really, really good, I thought. I mean, so I think I'm going to do that next. Between, between the studio, your studio and my studio, your repository, my repository, We've got so much on reserve. It's like we're two preppers with fucking um, underground vaults with just, I don't know, two, three dozen uh, rows of buckets of powdered eggs. Eat yeah. your heart out, Reverend Jim That's Baker. That's right. What are you going to do with the doo-doo? But instead, they're MP3s, MP4s, waves. You know, uh, mine's just even that, every now and then, Drizzle and Yona will catch some on somebody else's there. computer. Uh, we will catch a flack or two up in our uh, data folders as well. But that's how you know you're you're doing it right. Not everyone's going to love you. Not everyone should love you. All right, I I operate from the standpoint that you should actually have more people hate and fear you than love you. Yeah, but I, I thought that, that was sense. obvious. I thought everyone right. had figured that out. Well, now, if everybody does love you in your group, that's fine. Um, those are called cults. Uh, and and uh, here's your Kool-Aid. I already drank mine. That's why everyone's looking at you now. No peer pressure. You know, I heard something... This week, Yona, that I've never heard before in my life. I didn't think I would ever hear anybody utter these words, as a matter of fact. Especially considering that I was once a contracted employee of our beloved Federal Emergency Management Agency. Ah, Brownie's our guy. Yeah. Heck of a job. Heck of a job, Brownie. Yeah. FEMA is broke, Yona. Did you know that? Yeah. Utterly broke. Get well, they out. ransacked their budget because, um, you know, how are you supposed to prepare a cat for um, dinner service if you don't have a hotel room to eat it in? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I, I'm just, I'm curious, right? Because like I said, I, I've seen the organization from the inside, right? And I, for the record, I'm not adding to the cat hoax of Springfield, Ohio. I said preparing a dinner service for the cat because I intend to prepare a dinner service for the cat. And I and the cat are going to dine on a very fancy feast. And it's the salmon mix. Anyways. That sounds terrible. It's moist. Um, you know, a lot of Americans eat pet food. Um, because we're so rich. Anyways. Yeah. Well, especially in Joe Biden's America. That's right. But, but no, I've I've seen yeah. FEMA from yeah. the inside. Like I have I'm one of the people in America that actually has that perspective. Well FEMA is not to, something that is going to go broke. The key to intensifying an emergency and making it worse is proper mismanagement. That's where FEMA comes in. But how do you how how does FEMA go broke in the middle of hurricane season? First of all, they haven't even provided any type of a response as far as I can tell to the hurricane that we've already had. Well let to alone be fair, the one that hit Houston back in July. Right. Like I don't, but, I don't see that FEMA's been doing a whole lot of work in that respect. So how are they fucking broke if they're not actually like doing anything? Oh, well, it could be the fact that FEMA has gone broke and they're shorthanded on personnel because they are still throwing all of their manpower and assets at the Superfund cleanup of the East Palestine dioxins. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, uh, no, they still haven't shown up in East Palestine. 
Oh, well, then I don't know what the fuck, then. Uh, huh. Lahaina? Was it, did FEMA respond to Lahaina? Um, Maybe that's where all their money went. They were buying up all that property. I think Lahaina did ask FEMA for comment, and they had to leave a voicemail. But they couldn't because the voicemail box was full. Don't you hate that? Just have to try again later. Send a text. It's just, it's a testament <laughs> to the fucking cartoon that we live in. Like, the, that somebody could say with a straight face, FEMA is broke, and expect people to believe it. Well, yeah, I mean, the government is broke. They don't collect enough taxes, and they it's not like fucking they can money. Just print, it's not like they can just print money out of thin air. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Th this just in. The government prints money out of thin fucking air. Who knew? Yeah. They don't even need to collect taxes. They're Spoiler just stealing alert. from you. Sorry, I had to be the one to tell you, but um, it is what it is. Um, or in other words, um, taxation is theft. Pretty simple. Because, yes, they can print money out of thin air. And um, it tends to cause inflation and shrinkflation and... Um, Let's see, October the 3rd, 2024. Okay, we're all caught up. Well, yeah. When you control the money supply, you control how it flows. So you, you, can, the you can open the spigot as far <laughs> as you want anytime you want. And everyone else just has to deal with that effect. Well, yeah, because now all of a sudden, your dollar amount which was a percentage of the total amount in circulation doesn't even have half the value because they've printed three times as much in the money supply. Figuratively, not literally, because as you and I, and I would expect most viewers to know, the vast majority of U.S. dollars are never existing in the form of minted coin or printed bill. Correct. They're just O's and ones at the bank. You know, yeah. the recipient of your insurance policy that's in your name that you pay, but you'll never see one cent of. Right. There's less but than a trillion buy, physical dollars in circulation. <laughs> um, and the real number is actually much lower than that. You know, and... There has been this trend of de-dollarization, but I think it's kind of petering out at this point because... Um, oh, no, Yona. They're all pretty much de-dollarizing now. Yes, and now they are trading in, what was it? Pakistani Renminbi? tangerines, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was tangerines for sure. I can't remember what the country of origin was, but, but Russia was like, or, yeah, Russia was like, we'll, we'll accept your tangerines for oil. Wow. Yeah. And we already know that Russia accepts mandarins. Which sounds to me like, uh, what, what is it that they, uh, they used to call it? Like back in the olden days? Bartering. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly what it sounds like. So, and you know, when I say that the dollarization trend is waning, it's waning because um, almost everyone is now de-dollarized, even the Saudis. You know, the, the whole petrodollar and all that. Uh, well, as uh, the sailors say, that ship has sailed. Right, Desi? Oh, they'll still take our money. They won't have a problem taking our money. That's, again, it, all I see from the financial sector is fear-mongering. Mm -hmm. not, not people actually looking at things from a realistic standpoint. Um, they're, they're not going to kill 90% of the population on the planet overnight. That's not going to happen. That would be too obvious. 
in order can't to we, can't we fuck with the uh, interest rates a little bit harder jerome powell Let's oh they have will fun with they it. will they're they're gonna they're gonna keep playing <laughs> with it because here's the thing they have a new component to play with now it's called mm-hmm. crypto yeah so you can use the crypto market to uh as like a pressure release valve right Whenever you've got mm-hmm. too much liquidity in the system, well, you, you can just siphon some of it off into the crypto market and everything will be fine. I like to think of the crypto market as that thing, you know, like when you get done drying your clothes and you pull the clothes out and you can feel them and they have value and everything. And you're like, wow. And you can see all these different color fabrics in the clothes. And then you go back and you get it all cleared out and then you go back into the dryer and you got to take your fingers down and swipe out the lint trap. Yeah. And it kind of looks, you can see the different color fabrics and everything. Um, it but, always looks um, gray to me. That's because that, that, everything uh, is black. Except for this I mean, shirt. it's basically like the difference between real money and an NFT. You know, one is clothes you wear. The other one is the garbage from the lint trap. Anyways, back to you, Drizzle. Yeah. That, that's appropriate. I think that is actually a, <laughs> it looks an appropriate like analogy. Yeah. It, it feels like it, but it's yeah. it's the shit you throw away every every cycle of the wash. Anyways, yeah. it's it's the waste of the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> NFT, the waste, and that's all, folks. Yeah. Uh, have a good night. Oh, that's just the first hour. Uh, yeah, wait, where got, are you going? Well, I mean, we got yeah. a whole other hour to go, folks. Okay. All right. Slow your roll. Guys, we we're got we're on air for another oh. hour regardless. So, yeah. Because, you know, the whole point of the analogy about the, you know, doing the laundry is because um, crypto is a great way to launder money. Correct. As we saw with uh, uh, P. Diddy's cellmate. Yeah, and with and crypto, you can invest in NFTs. So there you go. Don't forget to clean out your lint trap. Speaking Monetize. of Ukraine, Yuna, Yona. <laughs> good Lord. I must be high. Uh, good news. Good news on the Ukraine front. Uh, they got more cocaine? No, not yet. I don't think. I'm not, oh, well, they honestly, won. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, come on, don't be silly. Uh, Ukraine crushed the Russian ruble, and it's never been worse, never been weaker. No. Oh, I'm sorry, this just in. Even better. The ruble's never been stronger against the dollar. That so, is correct. Um, that is correct. There's that. I'm sorry, go ahead. No. The uh, Pentagon has just signed a brand new contract uh, with Boeing. To make rockets for Ukraine. That's not a joke, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That that's actually a thing. So, uh, then Boeing will be able to do training videos and produce training materials for the prepubescent teenagers. And the uh, sixty-plus-year-old pensioners that now make up the remainder of the um, Ukrainian armed forces. So you know, great grandson and great grandpa can fight side by side because um, America is going to defend uh, the Ukraine to the very last Ukrainian standing. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. then we'll pull out and go fuck something else. There you go. And probably a few polls, too. I think so. I think they're just itching to draw Poland into it. Seems like it. Oh, they keep lobbing Poland shit is, over uh, on Poland. Poland is on that cray cray. They are really wound up in this. You got the anti Russia fervor. Wouldn't you be? They hate. There's a lot of them that just hate Russia and Poland, and you know, there's that whole Ribbentrop Molotov thing that happened a long time ago. That some people 
probably never heard we of. Talk, other we we talked about forgot. that last week. They, I actually called it out. Poland is still mad about that. I think that's a clip that's due to go out tomorrow. Yeah. Because I don't I think mean, it's they, gone they, out They yet. constantly get bullied and pimped on. But then with all the Ukrainians pouring in there, well, they hate Ukraine too. So the answer to that is everyone needs to hate the Polacks. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a second. I'm just getting this in. Everyone already hates the Polacks. So we're good. Well, not all of them. Well, there's Polacks. Some jokes. of them are okay. Uh, hey, I love the pierogies. So does Canada. They're good. And the Pochkis. And the Kilbosa. More sauerkraut, please. Man, that's some tasty old shit. So do I smoke a cigarette or hmm, smoke more of the weed? Smoke more there of the you weeds. go. When in doubt. When in doubt. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a rule of thumb. Pack the pack down the bowl with your thumb. Smoke more of the weeds. And uh tonight's weeds is brought to you by Greed Crack. It's greed. It's crack. It's green crack. So do we want to give any credence to the longshoreman strike at all now that it appears to be over? Wow, it's already over? Yeah. yeah. Boy, Apparently that they've already signed a deal to go back to work until January. I saw that right Man, before we went so on the air. So now the ILA... The International Longshoremen's Association, which represents all of the dock workers around the um, the puddle and the pond, as the Maritimers call it. The puddle is the uh, Gulf of Mexico. The pond is the Atlantic. Um, because the other ports on the West Coast are under the ILW, and they already had their strike and negotiation, and they were making more than double what the ILAers were making. And so that was the whole bitch because um, the windfall profits of COVID and everything. So what they work out? Uh, I think they basically got everything that they wanted. But they again, they're going to have to do it all again in January. Oh, kick yeah. the can down the road. Correct. Works every time. Which sounds like uh, I'm not almost makes it seem like, uh, again, it's going to be a second uh, Trump presidency once the selection season is all said and done. Because apparently there was some sort of connection between the that camp and uh, the, the dude that heads the Longshoremen Association. So there may have been some sort of leverage there. I don't know. Um, but I'm just, I'm amazed by the people that were like just scaring the fuck out of everybody for the last two days. <laughs> oh, this is what it's going to be like day three. This is what it's going to be like on day 10, on day 21. What the fuck are they trying to program people for? <laughs> I'm being serious. There's no coffee. There's no bananas. There won't be any furniture. There won't be any... It's like, bro, man... Like, I don't know if all of the have major actually been paying have attention known that about closely. this deadline coming down. They front loaded. They've been front loading orders for the last three months. Um, Fuck yeah, they've been rerouting fucking shipments to, to make sure that shit doesn't get affected. All of that. And um, they've now received enough precipitation over in the uh, Gatun Lake, uh, which is the summit lake for the uh, uh, Panama Canal that they're back up to full speed, full um, schedule uh, routes through there. Because uh, as you may recall, there had been such extreme drought in Panama, record low levels of the water. Yeah, they were having trouble getting ships through uh, the canal. Draft of navigation for deep water vessels, um, which is a major issue for the Panama Canal because they just upgraded it to Supermax lock system, the Miraflores and the other one, um, 
so they could because you know the panama canal internationally has been the choke point for all global travel and that's yeah constricted the size of vessels and so they finally made new canal lanes for what's now called the panama supermax class awesome it sounds like but a those couldn't take the canal uh, as often That's because right. they we require so person, much water to come out of the summit lake to push them through the locks. And that's been the whole issue is they weren't replenishing the water in the lake. They were just sucking the lake dry every time they lock a boat out. Well, that's not a problem now. So with the ILW under a new contract, they've just been pushing shit over there and front loading it. There was a three or four day burp in it, and they're going to be right back at it. Oh, yeah, they'll be right back at it. Everything will be fine. You won't even notice it. And and for the record, most of my information about all things maritime, I get from watching Sal Mercogliano, who is, uh, he's got his own show. I think we maybe, I may have featured some of his clips on here before. It's possible. His, his You're little, the only one that can uh, clips on here. So his channel, I think, is called um, "What's Going On with Shipping." With sound, right? It's one of those Italian names. It's easier to pronounce if you sprinkle um, powdered Parmesan on it first. I think. I don't know. I've been I've been given this quite a bit of serious thought today, uh, especially now in light of the fact that it looks like the, the strike is over. The whole point of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is to get the people in the developed nations accustomed to a lower standard of living. Whoa, that, that feels like America. Well, that's what I'm saying. If We're you, if you, look, if you look at the progression of events, especially in the economy over the course of the last four years, and then again project for the next five, you can kind of see that taking place in real time. This is just another example of it. Well, hey, you know, there might not be toilet paper at the store next time you go, so. It's startling to see, to watch it go from, because I'm so fucking old at this point, like. I actually had to go the, get toilet paper today, and, and the section was bare. I had to get it because I was out, because it was time for me to go get toilet paper. Not because I was trying it. to fucking hoard the shit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was surprised. I really the first was. Time I remember Apparently, these people have sister, learned fuck all. And they were ordering something that was actually from the Sears and Roebuck Company catalog, mail order catalog, because that was the thing. Right. In the late seventies, you know, you you go into the Sears and Roebuck catalog, and you could order shit, and then it would arrive in the mail. And um, you know, um. It's too bad we don't have anything like that today where you can like go through a catalog and then order stuff and they just bring it to your door. They were really ahead of their time. Yeah. Um, Because nowadays, um, well, there was not a time. um, You know, there was a time when you would see the mailman delivering Sears packages to people's front door. Now Mm -hmm. it's very rare to ever see packages being delivered on people's doors. Unless it's Amazon. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Nearly every fucking porch has shit piled up on it right. now everywhere I go. And I'm half the time one of the assholes dropping shit there. Yeah. That, yes. Uh, there's that dynamic. And then and the now, other dynamic is, well, then they decided, hmm... You've got all these mom and pop shops on Main Street, family owned businesses. <clears throat> How can Sears and Daw Hairs and corporate restaurants like Chick fil A and Sabaro, how can they compete with mom and pop Main Street? 
will recreate the pedestrian experience of being in downtown. Hmm. But we'll put it out on bypass, surround it with 35 acres of fucking parking lots, throw in three or four big box anchories. Yeah. Anchor is like, you know, again, Sears, Doll Hairs, uh, JCPenney, um, and, you know, and then stick you a food court inside with the Chick fil A and the Sabaro. Um, Fun fact Chick fil A first opened. In the Atlanta Mall. I believe it. And most Chick fil A's were only found in mall food court. Correct. This whole thing of. And back in the, the 80s, the, they the, gave the out Chick-fil-A free samples. It was fucking awesome. Three drive through lanes side by side, and it looks like carports all the way around. You got girls waiting on lines of cars and all that shit. That's, that, that's a new thing post COVID. Hmm. The triple drive through lane of Chick fil A. Wow. That wasn't so. We're going well, yeah, back. They even had but, they'd have people. I remember shit. We went to Chick Fil A during COVID. I remember that they'd have people out in the parking lot with tablets and shit taking yeah. your order. Yeah, it, it was. And that like, way, by they the were, time you get up to the window, it's already done. Yeah, dude, they were way ahead of everybody else on that shit. Yep, and now everybody's following their lead. Mm-hmm. And they're so, still not open on Sundays. Thus was born the indoor shopping mall, the corporate answer to downtown mom and pop shop blocks. We'll recreate that out on the bypass far and beyond the municipal boundary and taxation and law. Sometimes not even far and beyond, sometimes just beyond. Yeah. Like literally right, right over on the other side of the border. Right on the other side of the highway. Yeah. This side city limits and they're on the other side. Yeah. Just a massive fucking tax revenue fuck you to the city. And so now instead of going to all the mom and pop shops or ordering it uh, from Sears over the mail, well now you can take the whole family inside the mall and they got that mall music playing and there's a little toy train the kids can ride and that's right food court. Oh look, they've got a Sabaro and a Chick-fil-A. Mm. Um this mall is hopping. Um again, nineteen eighties. Um okay. you know, we get done, we'll go roller skating or something. Um, you know, check listen to that new Olivia Newton John. I got some leg warmers and a fanny pack. But you that was that. Mall, you knew your mall was legit, Yona, when you had uh, a KB Toys Bam. and a Spencer Gifts. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hello, Dildo. Um, <laughs> great gag gifts, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's like, you know, I really need one of these Lego block building sets for the nephew and a whoopee cushion. Luckily, Spencer's KB side by side. That's right. Got it. And while I'm there, I might as well pick up that black light poster I've been looking at too. So that was the eighties simulacrum for being able to go out and buy at all the stores in town and eat at the local restaurants. So tell you what, fuck your downtown, fuck your local restaurants fast forward to the 1990s whoa most of the downtowns are like area of the building is vacant and just about all local greasy spoons and joints and diners and dives are all folded and bellied up and it's like you go downtown and the only thing that's left is like the post office and the banks and the jail and courthouse and um oh and the homeless and the, and the uh, whores and the addicts um, yeah but, but you get you get outside of that yona go out on the suburbs and whoa whoop this town's got three malls now i love 1993 three malls, three malls and connected the by strip malls it yeah but then something happened between the 80s and the 90s they kept building out the malls, but the malls were getting um, overbuilt out, and the traffic is dropping, and 
because people are more and more broke and the voodoo Reaganomics of let's Wasn't give massive working. tax cuts to the corporations that make all the money and to the billionaires that hoard all the money and we'll pass even more of the tax burden onto the working class. And so, you know what? You don't have to go to a complete fucking shopping mall to get all your shopping done. Just go to Walmart. There you go. In fact, we'll make it a super Walmart and add a full bore grocery on one end to where Walmart will be your one stop shop. And you don't have to go to an indoor mall. Just go to the Walmart. There's your clothes. There's your guns. There's your deer stand. There's a bike for the kids. There's your groceries. That's right. And fast forward another 20 years. Now we're into the 2000s. Dude, this, this music sucks. And wow. Really? Jeez. So it's Walmarts and um, all of a sudden, Family Dollar, Dollar General, mm, Dollar, dollar Tree. Stores. Yeah. They start dollar stores. Well, that was that like, was around the time of the housing crisis, right? That mm -hmm. was that was when the rise of the dollar stores happened, because you had again so more people being priced out of the quote ago, unquote American dream. We've now come full circle because now the abandoned downtown strip with all those abandoned buildings, the one on the corner, has now got a Dollar General store in it, mm -hmm. and it's fucking packed. And the door to the checkout, I mean, the line to the uh, checkout is wrapped around like a serpentine. Well, yeah, because there's um, only like one person working there. Right. And that one person has to check a customer out and then say, hang on, I'll be right back. Run back over to that third aisle, do another uh, two or three minutes of stocking. And oh, then so come you've run been, back to, you've been to the Dollar General recently. Check out another customer. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Have you have you been not to the one kidding. here in Jasper by the house? Because <laughs> that's ex you just described exactly what happens. <laughs> yeah, like there's only what one employee, be, and they're like, supposed to stock yeah. all the shelves and cash out all the customers because the self checkout thing. Corporate has disabled that at all. Correct. Relevant. Correct. Sorry, um, you're just gonna have to wait. Yeah, for, but don't for worry. Your convenience, little of bell. There's one of those cute little bells where you can just ding, ding. It says ring oh, the bell for a... Um, yeah. Sorry, you're going to have to wait. I didn't like that shit even when I was in hospitality. Like, I understood it was like an accepted part of hotel culture, but it's still just demeaning. Yeah. A fucking ring it's a bell, come a running, slave. Faster slave. Yeah. Come faster, slave. Ding, ding. Faster, slave. Didn't you hear the bell? Where you at, boy? Fetch well, my spittoon, boy. We did, have, fresh we did have one bright spot this week, Yona. I'm pretty sure you probably didn't hear about this, but uh, industrial-sized staffing companies are fully throwing their support behind the Biden-Harris human trafficking network. So no questions asked. Keep the bodies coming. Um, well, you know, we got widgets and widgets and wadgets and wetzels and all these other pretzel things that they're not going to make themselves. That's true. I mean, who's going to clean the you know, At the widget factory, the training program is online or you can use the computer at work there in the... Uh, continuing ed room next to the lunch room um and you know just select your language spanish vietnamese nepali nigerian no you know and i mean if you complain about your work conditions um bear in mind you don't have proper work documents so mm. we'll speaking of your somalis ass. somebody else can do it uh, I you. did see uh, Minneapolis has accepted their first foreign national onto the police force. 
I'm sure that's going to work out well for them. Huh? Yeah. It, next thing you're going to tell me, the uh, homicidal supremacist maniacs uh, I daringly know as, uh, lovingly know as the uh, Zionists, they train most all police forces. Am I right, Whitney Webb? Um, uh, Mossad does, does have, um, they do have an outreach program for, uh, police and then, forces. Like, when it comes not to just in the, the United States, States, Yona, it's they're they're not discriminating against, uh, um, oh, they're all, they're, they're worldwide. Correct. It, it's like a belt and road initiative That's for right. Israeli hate. You pay them enough money. They will come and teach your police force how to crack skulls. And their weapons and tactics have been trained on live human-like creatures they call Arabs. The Palestinians, they call them Palestinians. Right. The Arabs are different people. Oh, man, that's some good stuff. Makes it all worth it. Doesn't it, though? Sometimes... It's not about winning the race, but just finishing it. Might not be the first horse to finish the circuit, but you finish the circuit. You complete the race. And uh, who are you racing? No matter how old and frail and tired I am. Um, oh, shit. Young man. I, I can report um, proudly to the listening audience and viewing audience. Um, there is no stopping the Yona. By hell or high water, Yona does reunite with Yonalings, whatever it takes. Well, there you go. Not even wild beast can prevent the Yona uh, from returning to the homestead, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. Uh, which leads us to the uh, value for value system. Um, I have to make this appeal tonight because, uh, well, I've never made an appeal before, but, uh, and I'm not going to be making an appeal tonight either because we don't have corporate sponsors. I don't panhandle. I work, I earn my own money. But that notwithstanding, we are a value for value show. Shout out to Adam Curry and that other guy. Um, love you, other guy. Other guy. Um, Come on. John C. Dvorak. <laughs> Man is a, is a living legend. He's a national treasure. Uh, uh, we would appreciate yeah, it if I know, he came on and did an interview. I'm just giving John C. shit because he needs to come on and do that interview. Um, but uh, the value for value system, and, and what that means is, Whatever value you get out of the program, you can compensate that value in a variety of fashions and means um, by enjoying it, sharing it, spreading it around, dropping links, um, or uh, there's all the different ways to contribute. And for more information on that, there's the manufacturingreality.org website and uh that's where you also find the boutique and everything, but more to the donate. So what's the tab for that? Uh, Provide, that value. Provide value. Provide value. reality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. If you just want to type it up. And there you'll find a variety of ways to support uh, the good work at the drizzled studios there in the, um, Quite often, moist and humid piney woods of Southeast Texas. Well, that's all. That's all well and good, Yona, and and I appreciate you taking the time and putting in the effort to do that. Uh, but where can people help support your work, especially now that uh, you know nature has seen fit to take your vehicle away from you, which was your primary primary way of earning a living? Right. Um, yeah, so for that, you would need to go to, uh, oh, what's that 
site that I hate. Um, oh, PayPal. Um, I know there's a number of sites that I hate. I should have been more specific, but PayPal is uh, K-I-M-A-N-Z-L-M-O. Um, and then Yona Aniwodi is the Cash App tag and all this. Where do I have that information at? Um, oh, go to my Rumble channel. Peasants Podcast on Rumble. And if you will look in the show notes for any, just find any episode of the Peasants Podcast from 1 to 86 or 87, whatever I'm up to. <laughs> well, technically, I did show 87, and it's on my channel. But that's the show that I slept through. So uh, we'll do show 87 again next Monday, except this time I'll actually do it. Wait, you slept through another one? Yeah. You should make it like a like a quarterly special episode. I mean, like not it announce gets worse. it ahead of time, but just every quarter do an episode. It gets worse or better, however you uh, choose to look at that coin. Um, I've not only passed out before shows and missed them entirely. Yeah, you've it's passed out during fun. shows too. When I'm in the middle of the show on camera and pass the fuck out. Out. But then wake up and huh? And then end the, the stream. So for the lucky few that have watched that one episode of the Peasants podcast, where like at the very end there's 32 minutes, 32 and a half minutes of snoring. And then I pop up and huh? And then it ends. It makes it worth it. That's you quality wait, content, boy. man. <laughs> yeah. Where else are you going to get that? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> that that's a that happened a long time ago. I, that's really old. Oh, yeah, it that's was several podcast. months ago. Um. Oh well. Yeah. Actually, I've passed out more than once during a show too. I like like sleep. a numbered show, or just like a yeah. random thing. Oh, okay. No, it was, it was on an, one of the numbered shows. I think thirty-two and then thirty-seven. Yeah, you know, that's back when. Well, Glory. That's back when Glory Jones would co-host the show every now and then because I would lose my internet while she was a guest, and so she would keep the show going because at that time I was still running it off of the um, classic license plate computer over there with its. Uh, what is it? Five and a quarter and three and a half inch um, floppy drives. <laughs> oh yeah, when you were running the dinosaur. <laughs> Still don't know how you were able to do that. <laughs> um, and uh, I gotta give a shout out to my homie Dead Bella because Heavy D just wasn't posted for him. a picture of you passed out in your Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'll make it next week's thumbnail. Uh, it's it's in my Hiona on Discord. Yeah. It's in uh, um, what? Oh, it's in the general channel. So it's right below the show announcement. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. I, I did. I say thirty-four. <sighs> you are so young. Yeah, look at that. That's that. That's uh, when I was still dyeing my hair black like Jimmy Dore. Wow, shots fired. <laughs> but unlike that jag off, I don't quit. Yona's not a quitter. Are you committed to drug abuse or not? Smoke more of the weed. How did we even get on that tangent anyway? I, I seriously, I hope this is entertaining for folks that are listening. <laughs> I just try to keep up most weeks. <laughs> it's not easy. Leave like, it to death I know to we Tyler. make this look really easy. It's not fucking easy at all, folks. I mean, I, I knew Deathy was going to bring that out because he's still butt hurt over the whole James Bond song with Simon Le Bon and, um, do I have to say the band name? 
Yes, I have to say Duran Duran. We're under contractual obligations on occasion. Well, he can get over it. He's he's a very demanding individual. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, uh, demanding to be referred to as Sir Deathy? Jesus Christ, man. He's never been knighted before. I don't know how it works in British Columbia. They do a lot of drugs there. Maybe different rules. I just don't know. So, uh, let's see. Um, well, we already did the money part. Um, oh, yeah. So, I've got my Palace Stoned album ready to release. Um, yeah. I've been needing to drop it for... I don't know, at least six months. Um, the title track, Phosphorus Eyes, uh, to the album, actually was featured um, by James Evan Pilato and Media Monarchy as like a song of the day back in February. So I'm, I'm way behind the cue ball on getting this... Um, Palestine album out and I normally uh, when I publish to uh, band camp and other places I normally always make my music free but man anything to do with Israel and Palestine is hot right now it's selling off the shelves so I think with this album I'm going to monetize every song. I'm going to monetize the album. If you want to hear any of the Yona songs about Palestine and Israel and get the real story on what's going there musically, well, I'm sorry, folks, but you're going to have to pay. <laughs> It's going to be worth it. Whole lot of people at that party, man. We got Norman Finkelstein. We got Stokely Carmichael, a.k.a. Kwame Ture. We got... Um, Howard Zinn. Several Yona Originals. Um, it should definitely... Definitely be a money money winner, breadwinner album for me. I, I, I figure if I'm ever going to start really aggressively monetizing my albums, what better way to start doing that than with my um, tribute album to all the victims of Palestine? You have to pay for it first. Sorry. Trying to make some money here. Oh yeah, like that uh, Middle East explainer video. I, I get what you're going. Yeah, there you from. go. Yeah. Hey, hey, oh, monkey yeah, see, monkey sense. you do. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Whatever. That was a long way to take a cheap shot. Hey, I'm just trying to make some money, man. Don't hate me. Hate the game. Don't eat the cat. You're not in Haiti. That's solid advice right there. Oh, man. So, uh, how hard are you going to crash? Oh, it's, it's going to be pretty rough, but I did. I have to give credit to dead fella. So he sent me in the beginning. It was the studio one digital audio workstation, and it has all these different plugins since then. Yeah. Your latest track, I've been able to plug in. Your to, latest track on Wednesday night got rave reviews, by the way. Well, yeah, because um so for people that go on the uh newsy channel on um Rant Temporal Liberty Radio on Telegram, you will see that there's Sinistress, 
Pentecostal remix. And then there's Sinistress Pentecostally remix, which is called Sinistresser. They're the same song. But the initial version was recorded in my old audacity with no mastering or engineering of the sound. And so when I went to make the, the music video with the animation, something G-rated that I can show to the kids, I, I talked about it on, um, uh, what's the new number six, uh, new prisoners, uh, TMP the two, live. Uh, TMP live. Yeah. Um, and it, it dropped at the very end of the show. Um, played out the show at the end there with that. Um, and I was explaining about the video and stuff. But when it came to, um, see, with Studio One, it's in different modules. So once I've recorded all the different tracks in Studio One, now I have MIDI files, not just squiggly wave files, but at bona fide MIDI files. And so I can change some instrumentation. It's just much easier to manipulate. More importantly, then I can go to the mix and mastering module on it and then go through and master and engineer the vocals, the cello, the viola, the violin, the contrabass, the piano, the grand piano, and then the Kurzweil and all the other stuff that I'm playing on that song. But most importantly, I can then put the clipping filter on my uh, uh, singing, my vocals, mix the whole thing down, and then shit it out with Studio One, and voila, it's like night and day. Um, you know, the crap I shit out on Audacity and the uh, polished studio stuff that's um, beautifully excreting from Studio One. That's all thanks to Dead Fella. I did listen to the uh, new music potluck last night. Oh God, uh, that fucking train wreck! Earlier today, and uh, you immediately picked up on that. Um, what? That it was uh, a train wreck? That was a train wreck from the fucking beginning. No, I mean picked that, up that, the fact that sure should have been aborted. I've been able to. Um, greatly improve my final output on music hmm. because of dead fella because he has hooked me the fuck up with the software yeah well, um, he, he has the gift yeah so you're, and, you're only going to benefit by association and then the best part of all is like he'll come back to me and he'll say hey I got some, I got these, these new lyrics from Dr. Dennis. Let's do this song. Oh, cool. Um, so what do we have for this song? Um, he's like, well, uh, I haven't started on it yet. Oh, okay. Uh, give me a second. You know, two, three minutes later, I shoot him a MP3, like, minute and a half of playing a theme on the piano and he was like holy shit dude hang on let me fuck with it and i'll send it back to you he sends it back to me it's got the bubbling bass with the fades and then he's put the spooky effect on all my keyboard and with the theme and now and then he's like hang on hang on hang on and he deletes and he's like i i, I gotta add something to it and then he sends it back to me again now he's he's played a fucking bass line part on it with a walking bass and then he's added a fucking slash guitar fucking shit on it. And then next thing you know, like a day or two later, it's on SoundCloud and I'm singing on the chorus and. And it uh, sounds pretty good. Um, and that's, that explains, I don't know about, <laughs> about a dozen songs now <laughs> we've done like that. Um, I'm talking about dead fellow, Dr. Dennis and me. Well, yeah, I, I thought, weren't you guys working on a new album or are you just yeah, guys yeah. just working on songs? Um, yeah, that, that, that I am working on a new album and that's my fourth album that I'm working on um, in the queue. So I'm kind of like, a, you know, 
kind of like when I go to pick up one of my orders at the restaurant and they're like, yeah, yeah, we have that order here at Dairy Queen, but there's three orders ahead of it. Oh, well, how long do you think it'll take? Oh, about 10, 12 minutes. Okay. Run out to the car, start that motherfucker up and drive somewhere else and then check back on the app and cancel that one. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't know if I'm going to resume door dashing with another vehicle. Yeah. Maybe I'll try something different. Like what do you think? Um, something that doesn't involve me driving three to 4,000 miles every week. Hmm. I tried blogging, but it didn't seem to make a whole lot of money. Unless you like soldiers sold to Google and then you can make a bunch of money. So Just I get thought, people to click on your website. I got for the super no wild reason. card to making money. I am a musician. Yeah. And if you pretend hard enough, you can be a well-paid musician. Yeah. It's my plan and I'm sticking to it. All right. I mean, people have done it before, so I know it's possible. And, you know, um, the uh, what lets me know that it's going to happen is the fact that when I go back now through the folders and listen to the songs that we've made together over the last two years, every single song is incrementally better and better and better. So um, it's just getting better. That's a good thing. Well, it should. That's what should happen. <laughs> like the more you do something, the better you should get at it. Like eventually there's, there's going to be a plateau where there's just, there's, you can't get any more better. You've reached the pinnacle, but until you get there, you should always be trying to get to the next level of better. If you're and the other about cool what thing doing, about it is now that I have a catalog of so many different songs, different keys, different tempos, different melodies, different harmonies, but I can just listen to a snippet anywhere from the song, five seconds of any of the songs. And immediately it's always my style of mm -hmm. playing my style of chords, my style. And, and it's very, very, uh, it's noticeable. Distinctive, yeah. It's very distinctive by my style. It's like a fingerprint. Um, but it's not that every song sounds the same. It's just how I, I play. Mm -hmm. Cause you have to bear in mind that most of my performing in bands with instruments has always been on the trumpet or singing, not on the piano. And, and until I sat down and started um, composing and performing songs on the piano three years ago, I only knew about two or three songs on the piano altogether. Oh, wow. And now I know over a thousand, but most of them are my songs because I'm not really into cover songs can you feel me billy corgan um but they're all different songs but but the style is there and so it, it's interesting this style and the style is kind of like a baroque trill style with doing trills and little things with the because that's how i would make solos when playing you know like brass band type music um, on the trumpet where I'm in brass ensembles and stuff. And so I, the melodies and the harmonies that I construct on the piano, it's like I'm still playing the trumpet rather than playing the piano. Now, you know, that's, that's why. So my style is basically like I'm playing the trumpet but with my fingers on a piano and not on the three valves. That's interesting. They're called trills when you trill on the trumpet. Da -da 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 -da. And, and that's, 
there's a lot of trill in yeah. my style. Well, I went I went from uh, trumpet to piano to guitar, and I always tried to translate uh, my style of playing piano to guitar. And for the most part, it worked. Yeah. Well, because you know, with the fretboard, the fretboard, you've got all your chords right there too, right yeah. at your fingertips. Well, you've but got you've trumpet, got your chords, and then you can also, depending on your how your uh, you develop your strum pattern, you can also you can do like a a pick and a strum combination from inside the chord that actually like builds the sound out even more. Honestly, out of all of those instruments, hands down, the most difficult instrument to play for me would be the trumpet. Because you only Man. have three valves. I didn't have and any the problems with position. it. So that's four positions um, to cover every single note. 88 keys on a keyboard if you want. And the only way to manipulate between those is with your embouchure. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes trumpet difficult. That's, you know, that's why a lot of them, well, when you're playing trumpet, there's first trumpet, second trumpet, and third trumpet parts. Because it, it all comes down to the strength of your embouchure, your lips, and mm -hmm. what can you do with your lips and your tongue, and can you do the circular breathing, like through your nose, um, which I learned how to do the circular breathing. That way I could play longer jazz solos. And, That's right. You know, like Wynton Marsalis and others do. That way you can just keep playing. Um, it's the same thing like when you're playing the midge whiz, the Bedouin flute. And it's just a constant droning noise. And so you have, you have to do circling, circular breathing where you puff your cheeks out. Probably one of the most famous trumpet players for circular breathing would have to be um, Dizzy Gillespie. Oh, absolutely. He would, he would really poof his cheeks out mm -hmm. as he's doing the whole circular breathing thing. That way he can just keep playing and playing and playing and you never hear him stop and go. <gasps> no, you'll never hear that with Dizzy Gillespie because he's circularly breathing, breathing Man. through the nose. You breathe through the nose and you just keep buzzing out the lips. You just keep breathing through the nose, buzzing out the lips. I get a little bit extra in the cheeks and just keep it going. <laughs> I never got to that level on the trumpet, but I know what you're talking about. Well, to be fair, I hate to toot my own horn, but in this case, I was literally tooting sure my own do. horn. Sure you do. Um, I was the top trumpet player in 91 and 92 in the state of Kentucky in the jazz Damn. band. Kentucky L State Jazz Band. Best trumpet player in the state. I was so, trying to bang um, girls in 91 and 92. I made Kentucky All-State Band four times, All-District Band five times, made All-State Orchestra, played in seven bands and drum corps. I was the bugler in the Army. And all that consummates into finally confronting the reality that... Uh, you know, ever since I started playing the piano when I was three years old, um, I, I've been pretending to be a musician for 47 years. So I think, the gig is up. I think the gig is up. Yeah. <laughs> People are catching on to me, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what can you do but laugh? I don't know. I've been wondering that myself. Cause again, I, I was, I, I got into a, a bit of a, a, I don't know what you call it with a statist on Twitter. And I'm looking at like the responses that I'm getting to, to my comments. And I'm like, how are you still alive? That's, that's literally like that. That's, where I find myself with most people these days. But it's our government. It's our Federal Reserve. Those are our aircraft carriers, Drizzle. Yeah, it's our Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> it's our consent ritual. Well, we've only got three minutes left, and I just have to say in Oh, passing, holy shit. That flew by. 
I really hope that Julian and Stella's kids are all right. Cause that little statement that he read out loud. Well, good Lord. The absolute look of horror was on Stella Sanja's face. Like it was a, that's like a hostage statement or reading a ransom note or something like gun to my head or gun to my kid's head or I, what the fuck was that? I don't know. That was uh shit. What do they call it? I can't Capture? remember. No, 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 no. There's a uh, uh, a word for it in the in the communist system, and the word is escaping me. Oh, when you get your head right. Correct. Re-education. Yes. Yes. You've been he was properly, re-educated. Finally, you have been properly re-educated. Correct. I have a feeling that that is um, that may be the beginning of a larger operation, mm-hmm. if you know what I'm saying. Hey, it's all about national security journalism. Well, I mean, we gotta we gotta protect people from dangerous speech, Yona. That's right. The, uh, the United Nations has made the it a priority. Pom-poms and the uh, stenographers to power, like uh, Amy Goodman, the War is Peace report. What is it? Uh, Derpocracy now. That's still on the air. I, I hate to make fun of that show. I hate to make fun of Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez, but uh, it is what it is. Here we are, folks. It's like MSNBC Zero. Or Coke Zero or Pepsi Zero. Like, what the hell is phenylalanine again? Phenylketonurics? Uh, the only part the warning of that label is not an endorsement of the product, but it's just a warning label that it's poison. It really should have a skull and crossbones. Um, hmm. But it is fizzy pop. Look, you own a pro tip. If you really want fizzy pop and you want to get fucked up, pair your Everclear with a fresh bottle of Jaritos. Many flavors to choose from. Mandarino, fresa, tamarindo. Mighty tasty. Manzana, aranja. Good shit, man. Damn straight. Well, folks, um, hey, uh, I do appreciate any and all help. I know I will get help. I always do. I never have what I want, but I always have just enough to get what I need and the kids need. So that's usually beyond that. Uh, we'll figure it out. Um, I think um, I finally have that time I've been looking for to upload to uh, Bandcamp all of these songs I've made in the last six months, of which hardly none have been uploaded. And uh, I appreciate all the people that buy the records there too. Um, I have changed uh, my mind on one thing, though. I'm not going to be monetizing the uh, Palestine album. I haven't monetized anything yet, and uh, I'm not starting now. Psych. Perfect. Anyways, that's all we got tonight, folks. Well, it's told again to go on. It's toxic. We'll see you tomorrow night, everybody.